this. This is a tent. Chuck that in your backpack. This. Sleeping bag. Chuck that in your backpack. This. This little package, about the same sort of size, isn't it? Maybe a little bit smaller even. This is a boat, an actual boat. Today, I'm looking at the Ituit 100 Packraft, sent to me for review by Decathlon. Packrafting can take your paddling, hiking, or even bicycle trail adventures to a whole new level. Take you to the parts other boats can't reach. This small lightweight package you can just throw in your backpack or panniers without weighing you down too much is a bundle of opportunity and exploration. But how does the Ituit hold up? In this review, I'll be looking at the specs, performance, quality, as well as some thoughts on packrafting in general. So stick around until the end, because there's a lot I want to touch on. If you already have your eye on this pack raft, but are also considering an inflatable kayak you've seen, and you're weighing up the two, you might be asking yourself the wrong question. Pack rafting and kayaking are completely different pursuits. Pack rafting is a unique type of boating that can take you to places no other craft can. It's super portable, and it's usually combined with another type of outdoor activity, especially hiking or bicycle touring. Kayaking, on the other hand, is more of an activity of itself and is better suited to longer hours in the boat, long distance, or simple leisurely recreational boating. The type of trips or adventures you expect to be doing will help you decide between pack rafting or kayaking. Now, as per the usual decathlon numbering system, the 100 in Packraft 100 means beginner or occasional use. It's important to mention beginner doesn't mean budget. This is certainly not a budget pack raft. Its construction and design standard assumes you will be doing some pretty rugged rafting. It's like a decent pair of hiking boots. Everything comes in this sturdy dry bag, which is also actually the pump. It's oversized, so you can even use it as your day bag while you're on the water, if you don't already have a backpack. Because it has the pump valve, I like how you can squeeze every last bit of air out of it, making it as compact as possible. The pack weight is an impressive two kilograms. I've taken it on a hike and it felt like nothing in my backpack. Payload capacity is 110 kilograms, which is fine for one adult with a typical hiking backpack. I've seen people collapse their mountain bikes and lash them to pack rafts too. This is a one-person boat. If you expect to take a passenger, consider an inflatable kayak. Opening up the package, the first thing you notice is the setup and pack-down instructions. They're printed largely and clearly and attached to the bag so you can't lose them. I found them pretty easy to follow and they're purely graphical so there are no language issues. Inside is the inflatable seat. More on that in a bit. There is the hose and attachments for pumping. There's the instruction manual, paperwork, warranty, that kind of thing. A packet of repair patches in case you get a puncture. And the boat itself. This strap and clip that keeps everything tightly rolled up is also used to secure the seat to the boat when assembled. This doubling up of jobs is an example of the efficient design of this pack raft. The boat inflates to one PSI and you don't have to worry about a pressure gauge or anything like that. The valves will not let any more air in when they get to pressure so you know when to stop. It's very clever.
This bag as pump type system works really well. Decathlon reckon it takes about 10 bags full of air to inflate to pressure, and that's about right, give or take a few pumps. The seat is very generously sized and sits high in a good way. I'm fairly average height and weight and there was plenty more room to accommodate larger built bottoms and it's pretty comfortable for an inflatable seat. The retainer strap with cable tidy keeps everything neatly and reassuringly secure. So there, about seven minutes to unpack and inflate and that was on the first attempt. I'm sure with practice you could do it even quicker. The boat is two meters, five centimeters long and 95 centimeters wide. Construction and materials feel top quality, reassuringly tough, while maintaining that low pack weight, always a difficult balance to strike. This includes the floor, which is not inflated, but comprises very sturdy double-skinned and reinforced polymer. 420D TPU double laminated polymide to be precise, and no idea what that means, but it looked pretty tough to me. Features include tough reinforced grab handles for portaging or on the water recovery. I really like these lashing loops for attaching your day bag or backpack to. Check your weight and your pack's base weight and keep within capacity, but being fully loaded didn't affect performance for me. In usual Ituit fashion, the boat doesn't come with a paddle. I've mentioned in other reviews why accessories being sold separately is actually a good thing. For review, I use this recommended four-piece Ituit paddle. Although I've heard a rumor that a new paddle might be coming out this year, I will link in the video description to whatever the current recommended paddle is. Getting in and out is hardly graceful, but it's not supposed to be. This isn't a boat for taking your Tinder date on a river picnic through Cambridge on a summer afternoon. This is for people who expect to get wet, get muddy, and probably already are by the time they even have the boat out of the backpack. Pack rafting is raw, rudimentary, an adventure sport. One of the first things you notice on the water, as you can see, is this side-to-side -side wobble. And I know people have asked me if it comes with a skeg and what the tracking is like. So the first thing I'd say is that this is a raft and I try to stay away from direct kayak comparisons or even terminology. No, it doesn't have a skeg, but putting one on wouldn't do much at this boat length. And it doesn't track straight at first, but you get a hang of it very quickly. It's basically super responsive. You can turn the boat 180 in just one stroke. In fact, doing these donuts was actually really fun and a bit addictive. This super maneuverability is great for moving water, dodging obstructions, and getting into those nooks and crannies that would actually be quite difficult to navigate in a long kayak or canoe. You see how knowing the type of boating you expect to be doing is essential. And to be honest, after some time in the boat, you learn that steering sensitivity and how to use it to track straight anyway. It kind of swims rather than tracks through the water. Sure, you wouldn't want to do long distance or spend hours on the water in one, but it's great for short stretches. The boat is rated for class one moving water and handles this more than comfortably. It's extremely stable because it's flat bottomed. It would take an awful lot to tip it, nothing you'd expect on class one. The only tipping risk is entering and exiting, so just take your time. The biggest enemy you'll find, not just for this, but for all pack rafts in general, is wind. It's gonna be very vulnerable to high gusts and hard to push against headwinds or fast currents heading upstream for that matter. So keep that in mind. Now the price. At time of filming, it's currently 400 pounds. That's pretty competitively priced when you look at the nearest competitors for this class of pack raft. If you're new to pack rafting, you're usually looking at upwards of 500 pounds to get started. Um, I've noticed some people say from like a kayaking background seem to think that that's pretty expensive because you know, the boats look so basic. But what you're paying for is that sturdiness to weight ratio. 
Sure, it could be done cheaper, but either you'd have to increase the pack weight, which kind of defies the point of pack rafting, uh, or they could compromise on quality, and which, given the types of boating that you do in these, you're usually something a bit wild. Uh, you know, you need them to be tough. They're not toys. Uh, anyone who's ever done any kind of ultralight hiking or camping will know the, the premium you pay for reducing your carry weight and what a huge difference it makes in the field. So I think these are accurately priced. So in conclusion, now this is not a sponsored video, I'm not paid or required to say anything, they just lend me this stuff and ask for my opinion. I was skeptical at first, being more used to kayaks and canoes, you know, bigger boats with larger capacities. But once you understand the difference between pack rafting and other types of boating, then what you have here is Ittywit doing something that is very distinctly Ittywit, but in this relatively new and fast growing paddle sport, and I think they've done a great job. What attracts me to this boat is the ability to go places I couldn't even consider in my kayaks. I'm thinking, for instance, Tarns, you know, those high altitude lakes you get in Snowdonia in the Lake District, uh, certain backwaters of rivers, lots of ideas really, um, or, you know, taking it on a plane and going up to Scotland for a weekend. And, you know, I really like the idea that you can combine this with other things like hiking, extending your exploration capabilities. That's something I've been looking to expand on anyway on this channel. I wanna go further than just rivers and canals all the time. So if I was to summarize this boat in like just one word, I think it would be possibilities. Now guys, reviews are all very good, but the only true test is to take it out for a proper field trip. And that's exactly what I've done. I've done a video of a, a hike and pack raft route I did. It's in the middle of January as well. So like a proper real world test. Uh, if you wanna watch that, I'll leave a link here and also in the video description. Oh, and links uh, for this uh, at Packraft and any, anything else you've seen in this video are also down below as well. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like if you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.